Good afternoon and welcome back to Gated with Truth. Thank you so much for joining us this afternoon as we end off our series, The Trauma of Better. Everything that I have been speaking to you about in this series is things that I have personally gone through or things that the Lord is taking me through. And I found it relevant to share it with you because I feel like a lot of people across the world are actually going through similar situations, similar trials, similar testings by God to be able to get into the places, the spaces, the positions and the people God wants us to be. Today, as we end off the trauma of better, we're going to be talking about walking in glory. Sometimes we have been in the trauma so long or trying to overcome so long that we don't know how to enjoy better. We keep waiting for the other shoe to drop or we keep saying let's not you know spend this money here or let's not do this because we have to we have to save we have to keep it because you never know when poverty or famine or drought will strike so let's not spend anything but God doesn't want us to live like that obviously he doesn't want us to be wasteful but he also wants us to enjoy life he wants us to have our freedom after all he fought for this freedom for us so even as we go into better let's have an open mind to what god wants for us first corinthians chapter 3 verses 17 and 18 says now the lord is that spirit and where the spirit of the lord is there is liberty but we all with open face beholding as in a glass the glory of the lord are changed into the same image from glory to glory even as by the spirit of the lord so here we are seeing wherever the spirit of the lord is there is liberty there is freedom there is a sense of release that exists now a lot of times people think okay when you follow god you have to abide within certain rules and regulations and you have no type of freedom but this what we have with god is perfect freedom we don't have to be chained to addictions we don't feel bound or heavy or anything like that we feel free there is no condemnation with us there is no trying to keep up with certain status there is none of that we have perfect freedom when we follow god so when we enter into this thing with god there is a sense of liberty so even though we fall within certain rules regulations you know god commands his statutes his laws we don't cast off restraint we don't live any kind of how and living in this way gives us a sense of moral it gives us a sense of character it gives us a sense of knowing who we are and then in this scripture it talks about you know beholding the face of god and then being changed to the image of god and what a wonderful thing it is to be christ like to be within that image of God because he died for us not just for our sins but so that the real us will be revealed as Christ reveal the real us we have not just a sense of direction but we have a sense of who we are and who we are in him so Christ did not just die for our sins alone he died for our freedom and as we walk into our freedom we have to be changed by him change to look like him change to reflect him upon the earth abraham would have had this transition take place you know yesterday we were talking about how they tried to fulfill this thing for themselves but when they hang back and they allow god to work god was able to fulfill the promise spoken to them without any issues without any problems without any consequences and today i want to let you know that part of walking in glory is understanding who you serve 
understanding that it is God you are connected to who can give you any promise in the world and at some point he's going to test you to see if you are really with him for the things that he can give or for who he is and you are the only person that can answer that question genesis chapter 22 verses 1 to 8 says and it came to pass after these things that god did tempt abraham and said unto him abraham and he said behold here i am and he said take now thy son thine only son isaac whom thou lovest and get thee into the land of moriah and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains which i will tell thee of and abraham rose up early in the morning and saddled his ass and took two of his young men with him and isaac his son and clave the wood for the burnt offering and rose up and went unto the place of which god had told him then on the third day abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place afar off and abraham said unto his young men abide ye here with the ass and i and the lad will go yonder and worship and come again to you and abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it upon isaac his son and he took the fire in his hand and the knife and they went both of them together and isaac spake unto abraham his father and said my father and he said here am i my son and he said behold the fire and the wood but where is the lamb for the burnt offering and abraham said my son god will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering so they went both of them together so here is abraham he is on this journey with god and even though abraham has reached a place where he has received his promise and he's now walking in the glory having his son the heir to his throne and all of that god comes to him to say sacrifice this child and abraham even though he is in a wealthier place even though he's in a better place even though he has gotten past the trauma and is dwelling in better he does not turn away from god his journey started off with faith and obedience and now as he continues his journey he's in a new part of the journey but he has not forsaken the principles of god he has not stopped obeying and he has not stopped having faith his obedience took him to the mountain and his faith said god will provide the sacrifice he already made the decision to give up anything for god and in this moment was a moment that god tested abraham's faithfulness and abraham passed this test with flying colors whatever your promise is you have fought very hard to get it you have cried many tears for it but if god requires it from you that you must give to him also and abraham made such a divine statement that god will provide himself a lamb which shows that jesus christ who came and died and took away our sins as the lamb of god was in fact going to happen he gave us an insight into what god will do in the future and abraham spared nothing to follow god there is nothing he would not have given up for god in that moment because abraham was a friend of god he partnered with god he had faith in god he trusted god with his life and now with the life of his son and it's easy for us to trust god with ourselves but a lot of times it's hard for us to trust god with our loved ones but god is saying today if you would release them to me i will take care of them he's saying nothing is too hard for him to do which includes taking care of you and everyone connected to you and even in this season of entering into better let's not become complacent and let's not just remain where we are but even though we are now dwelling in better 
it is still not God's best. Joshua chapter 13 verse 1 says, Now Joshua was old and stricken in years, and the Lord said unto him, Thou art old and stricken in years, and there remaineth yet very much land to be possessed. So even as we enter into our better, we receive our promise, and we continue to pursue God, let us not become complacent, but let us possess the land and continue to move along this journey with God. God told Joshua that there was more for them. They did not grab hold of everything that he had released unto them. And so too, we must guard against settling. We must guard against complacency. We must guard against good when great is out there for us. God has made us to be extraordinary. He has made us to continue on this journey with him till the end of our years. He has made us to possess the land, possess our possessions and accomplish our complete will in him. So let us not stop halfway. Let us not die in between. Let us not forfeit our destiny, but let us receive everything that God has for us. I'm talking about walking in glory. When we walk in the glory of God, we are connected to the will of God and we are alignment with our destiny and there's nothing that can stop us. But we cannot remain comfortable. We cannot become complacent and we cannot settle in better when God's best is waiting on us. Psalm chapter 105 verses 1 to 8 says, O oh, give thanks unto the Lord, call upon his name, make known his deeds among the people, sing unto him, sing psalms unto him, talk ye of all his wondrous works, glory ye in his holy name. Let the heart of them rejoice that seek the Lord, seek the Lord and his strength, seek his face forevermore, remember his marvelous work that he hath done. His wonders and the judgments of his mouth. O ye seed of Abraham his servant, ye children of Jacob his chosen. He is the Lord our God. His judgments are in all the earth. He hath remembered his covenant forever, the word which he commanded to a thousand generations. So I am here to tell you, when God has delivered this promise to you, when you are walking in glory, when you are in better and you are headed towards best, continue to give to God thanks because a heart of gratitude goes a long way. It shows that like Abraham, you are not in love with the things that God can provide for you, but you are really connected to God, our Father, our Lord, our Savior, and our friend. What a mighty God we serve that he would take us from a place of nothing and make us into these extraordinary people. The least we can do is have a heart full of gratitude. And it says here, those who seek the heart of the Lord will glory in his name. We'll seek his strength and that is what we'll have forevermore. Why? Because he remembers his covenant with a thousand generations. God could have forgotten us, but he didn't. He tested us, he tried us. Yes, life was hard, it was difficult. We had to wait a while. We had to have patience and a lot of faith. But guess what? God remembered us. God continued to do it for us. And even as we receive our promise, God has more for us. He has promises for us that you can't even imagine because he wants us to become extraordinary. As a child of God, you are extraordinary. You are not a normal person. You are not just going about life, but you live intentional and you walk in the glory of God. So even as we get past the trauma of better and we enter into our promise, let us be grateful to our God for the tests, for the trials, for the tribulations and for the breakthrough. We have to appreciate it all because it is the same principles that we learned in our hard times that we will be able to use in our best days that will keep us from sinning and that will keep us from our own demise. It will keep us from living any kind of way 
and like a child of the world and it will help us to understand that we are kingdom citizens we are ambassadors of christ and we are children of the true and living god so continue to walk in glory as you get past the trauma of better thank you so much for listening have a wonderful weekend bye